All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 7.13 p.m. California time here. Monday, July 21st, 2025 is the date. Got uh, a signature here of another large earthquake coming into the Japan area. Look at that, showing up uh, quite nicely there on the seismograph stations. Uh, USGS not picking up on this earthquake yet. It just came in. Uh, I believe it's right around the area where that 7.4 struck here uh, just a short time ago. There it is, 6.4. Looks like it's hiding out there, so let's bring the date down a little bit so we can see where that's at. There we go, up there, uh, right in that same area, northern end of the Curl Kamchatka Trench off the coast there of Russia. That is a, a big one here, so that technically would be, let's see what we got here if we go back in the last seven days. 6.4 that's going to be number five for the six pointers now five six pointers and probably the third or fourth a largest aftershock sequence there so that's a again a little concerning because as i've been stating here this is very reminiscent of what happened back here in 2011 same sequence of earthquakes same a lot of you know large magnitudes here uh, before and following so far the largest quake the 7.4 but uh, down here, two days later, follow, following that same event, uh, back in 2011, we had that nine-pointer, March 10th. So we've got to watch this closely here. This area is very capable of producing a mega quake out there. Again, this earthquake, the 6.4, just coming into the seismograph stations there. Uh, that showed up on uh, Mount Rainier. Here is the Kagoshima uh, station. Let's see if these guys are going to report it here. They've been a little slow here on the weekends. Let's go check out the EMSC model real quick because that's the ones that are reporting this earthquake on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Um, 6.4 there off east coast of Kamchatka. That's going to be in that same zone there in the purple circle, the latest earthquake here. Now it's 28 kilometers deep. The earthquake itself has yet to be reviewed by a seismologist, so this could get revised. Um, when I was looking at the seismograph stations there, it looks like it's probably going to stick for a 6 or a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. So we'll have to see what they come up with. But uh, see if the U.S. Tsunami Warning Center is uh, showing anything. Uh, these guys are still showing the 6.1 from uh, yesterday. So like I said, this event just coming in here, folks. A um, lot of earthquake activity out here. I'm telling you, it's pretty crazy. Um, let's look at this here real quick while we wait on the magnitude level. Bells are off. Mike is on. All right. Congratulations, by the way, for our members of the member drawing. Um, 121 earthquakes. And the concerning thing is here that we did not just pop this off with a 7.4 and then voila, we got all this aftershock activity. We actually started this off with some vibes and some other quakes here previous to a 6.6. And then uh, about 20 minutes later, we had that 7.4. And a bunch of sixes since then with the most recent 6.4 here. So this could be, these could very well be four shocks. Not even joking here, folks. This is uh, not good news. And I covered, you know, I covered this here a couple videos back when the 7. Actually, it was last night, if I remember. Uh, or in the morning. It's been busy out here. Let me tell you, it's been a lot of earthquake activity. Uh, but same type of sequence of earth events, large amount, unusually large amount of aftershocks. And then two days later, a 9.1 earthquake down here across the Japan Trench. This area, obviously, way up north here, but it's along a major subduction zone here that's capable of producing a 9.0 earthquake. The last one, specifically in this segment, was back in 1952. So a little bit of time has passed. Um, you know, it's something to watch here really closely because it's an unusually large amount of aftershocks there. Still waiting on the USGS here. But no telling when it could pop up. EMSC still sticking with a 6.4 magnitude. I'm going to refresh this just to see. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I removed all the quakes for now just so we could see that 6.4 because there's so many earthquakes in there. 
that it's uh, really hard to see that most recent quake there. Crazy. So we'll check back on that here in just a second. The Alaska earthquake activity kind of dying off. But over here in the middle point, the boundary here, the subduction zone in between these very active areas started showing some movement this afternoon as well with a five-pointer in between here along the Aleutian Trench. So technically, you know, pretty much anywhere along the northern Pacific Plate down through the Crow Kamchatka, um, the Japan Trench I'm really not so worried about because we had that 9.1 back in um, 2011 here. What I was just talking about, how the sequences are very similar. Uh, but this area down here across the Nankai Trough and into Taiwan, it's got to watch this area closely here. We're getting so much adjustment going on, a lot of pressurization here, and it's starting to show. The general plate movement here, when we see a lot of earthquake activity, shifts the Pacific plate here and the pressure off to the northwest. That includes areas around Japan and um, potentially around Taiwan area as well. Not to mention the Izu Trench, Mariana Trench here as well on the east side of the Filipino plate. So yeah, it's, man, just kind of waiting here. Let's go ahead and check out California real quick, see if we got anything else going on here while we wait on the confirmation of that earthquake. A couple smaller quakes down there across Southern California. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, a look at the 2.5 model, pretty much removes all the earthquakes. A couple more up here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, including a 2.6 back off of the plate boundary. Let's go check out the um, trimmer map here real quick. See what we got for Cascadia trimmer, and it's still elevated. 257 epicenters here in that same area, central coast there, north central coast it looks like of Oregon. So we've got strain building out here. Some down south here as well into the southern end. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Maybe a while. But that is a uh, definitely a distinct signature of a large quake. And it looks like the P wave did show up there all the way across the Pacific there in Northern California at Petrolia. That's a P wave of it. We'll see the S waves eventually hit. But that signal, let me see. This is Southern California. This may get revised up a little bit bigger. Uh, it could potentially be here a little bit bigger, maybe an upper six. I don't think it's another seven, but uh, yeah, I'd say probably around the 6.7 or so, 6.8. Uh, just looking at the seismograph stations here and the locations, right? All right, Southern California is picking up that wave. Here's the S waves coming in there locally to Japan, the uh, Kagoshima area. There's Japan. Southern California now picking up the S wave right here. So primary wave surface wave so that's a decent earthquake it very well me may be up in the upper six range and i still have yet to see the uh, usgs come up here what's going on hello okay we'll check back on them but i'm thinking that's going to be a little bit bigger up into uh montana or the uh montana wow washington area still got a swarm of activity up at mount rainier nothing new real quick total tally here across the area of mount rainier Closing in here on a 1,000 earthquakes almost. 938 to be exact here in this earthquake swarm. We got uh, 12 today, so that is still continuing. Um, a real quick glance here at the volcano Mount Rainier seismograph station here. Let's see if we got anything to pinpoint or point out here. Um, not there. Not for sure what all that noise is. I know there's some clouds and rain, and I don't know if there's thunderstorms up there right now, but could be some interference. There's the earthquake uh, this morning. It was a 2.2. Uh, that did register quite nicely, about 3-something in the morning there. That is the uh, kind of the northern edge here. If you look at the swarm here, this 2.2 that struck is further away from the swarming area to the north. And... Um, it looks like they revised this to a negative 1.2, so still fairly shallow underneath this area, but above sea level, a uh, mile point two, one point two 1.2 miles above sea level, but below this ground because it's 14,414 uh, feet here. So you got to subtract the, the, the um, this distance there for the mileage. Well, that's a lot of earthquake activity. Um, some down here across Mount St. Helens as well, a little point seven. What is going on here? <laughs> you guys see that? It's got to be bigger than the 6.4. 
That's what these guys are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that must be a newer quake. I was going to say, did they downgrade that? No. So that's a secondary quake coming in right here. We had the 6.4, right? Hiding behind that. Now we got another quake of a 5.5 magnitude earthquake hitting the same area. I'm telling you, this could be getting close here to mega quake. Uh, it's... That's way too many aftershock sequences there for a 7.4 in the terms of the magnitudes out here. Like I say, it didn't just start off with a 7.4 and then we got all the aftershock activity. USGS uh, looks like they finally came on here and reported this as a 6.3. It has been reviewed, but I have seen times here in the past where they'll throw up this number and then someone else will review it. There's, you know, there's many seism seism uh, seismologists that are looking at this, but um, looking at the seismograph station there that I showed you guys a little bit ago, definitely looks like it's bigger than a 6.3. So we'll just put down there for now, 6.3. Uh, if something changes, and obviously I'll include that in the update video, but uh, either way, things are still rocking. And uh, there was another five pointer there, 5.5. So just watch this closely here, folks. Big earthquakes are, uh, you know, it seems like they're happening a lot more, though, right? Uh, well, I think what's going on is we're finally starting to catch up here in terms of the number of large events that we're supposed to see per year. You know, we were only at, oh, five here a short time ago. Now I think we're up to seven um, earthquakes of magnitude 7.0 to 7.9. We're still waiting on an eight-pointer. Uh, our last one was four years ago. So that leads me to believe here the likelihood of seeing a nine-pointer out here uh, could come up. And that's uh, a very good location where it could happen. Uh, so just watch this closely, folks, here. I mean, it's, it is uh, very visible, the amount of pressure and, and earthquake activity that's happening out here. And just because we've seen a 7.4 does not mean that the entire stress has been relieved out here more pressure is increasing i think to cause these further earthquakes um gotta remember for uh for a seven pointer you would have to well for a nine pointer you would have to have 1000 seven pointers to equal the energy of a nine pointer 1000 seven pointers we are not seeing that <laughs> if we did that would be crazy uh, but a nine pointer can release so much more energy and earthquake activity out here in, or in terms of stress uh, than than a seven pointer can ever do so watch that closely i'm gonna jump off here and kind of keep an eye on things nothing major going on in the space weather activity we've got that coronal hole here which is now shifted further to the west um, i don't think we're going to see anything out of it in terms of um yeah it looks like they maybe added a g1 class storm here on the 23rd UTC time here. Um, KP index up around five. We'll check back on that a little bit later though. Nothing major going on as far as the auroras go. For now, nothing going on for flares. Things are pretty quiet there across the aurora board for now. All right, folks, I'm gonna jump off here. There's that five pointer coming back in following that 6.3. Watch this closely. We could be talking about a very similar event. Such as what happened down there in uh, Japan in 2011. Same type of sequence of events there. All right. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later. It's still a little early. I will probably come back on tonight here and do a late night update. It's only 7.30 here along the West Coast. I wanted to cover this earthquake here uh, that's coming into Japan right now. We'll catch you guys back out here in a little bit. 